Okay, um, hello everyone. Okay, so let's talk about variables. All right, so this is our previous program. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And if you wanted to clear any um, output from here, you can just right click and hit clear this way. All right, so this is the same program that we were in. I'm just removing the contents and we're going to work um, on, on this on the same file. Okay, so let's talk about variables. What, what are variables? Now, variables are basically a, a pieces of information that are stored in the memory of your computer, right? So when you write programs, your program is going uh, it's going to basically need all, 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 also all kinds of data, right? Different kinds of data. It's going to need, let's say, numbers or strings, as, as we've seen in the previous video. Now, assuming your program, you wanted to write a program that basically accepts two numbers from a user and then adds those two numbers up and then displays the sum um, to, um, you know, it, it displays the sum back to you, right? So your computer would need a place or would, would need a, some, some kind of mechanism or system to be able to remember those two numbers, the first number and the second number, right? So those, you know, the, the, those, the, basically those two numbers are going to be stored in the memory of your computer and then given a name. So variables are basically pieces of information stored in the memory of your computer and then given a name. Okay, so th there are different types of data that we can have as variables. We can have numbers, strings, and in future videos we're going to cover each one of them separately. You know, numbers, strings, all of them. Strings are basically what you think of as you know words or sentences in English. Right in programming, it's a string, a series of characters joined together. So that's what variables are. Your program needs to keep track of all the all the you know the pieces of information, so it stores them in its memory, and then it gives it you give it a name, so that when you tell the computer to uh, to tell you what is stored in this particular variable, we can tell you and say, okay, you store this number here, so he, so so really it's so so basically it will tell you exactly what's stored there. All right. So how do we create variables? Remember I said you give it a name, right, and then that's it. And then, so so you give the name and you give it a value. So the way you do that is you, you first of all start with your, the name of the variable. So as you mean, I wanted to you know create a program that adds two numbers up. I'll I'll call the first one as for example, um, number one, right? And then I'll use the equal sign and say number one is equal to four. Now by doing this, I've told the computer to to uh, to basically create a space in its memory. Name that space number one, and then in that number one variable, store the value four in there. Okay, I'm telling the computer uh, the computer to to keep track of this um, process to be basically keep track of this number. Call it number one. Create some space in your memory and store it in there. In the same way, I can tell the computer to create another space in its memory. Call that space number two and store the number three in there. So by doing this, I can come down here and say that print, remember we looked at print in the previous video. I can say print in my parentheses, I give it my, my argument, my, I pass in my argument. And my, the argument I want to uh, pass in is in this case, number one. I'm telling the computer that I told you to store the number four in, uh, four and then so I, basically I told you to store the number four name it number one, right? So I'm basically asking, computer, what's stored in number one? Now, now you'd, re you'd realize or think that, okay, in the, in the previous example of a print function, we had double quotations or single quotations around this here. So we'll see that in a second. But first, let's run it the way it is, without quotations. When I run it, it's able to tell me that, it's able to print that number one contains four. Now, you be, you'll be wondering why, you know, why did this print function not print number one? That's because we didn't surround this with double quotations or single quotations, right? As soon as we do that, this becomes a string, more like a, a word or a sentence in English. So as soon as we surround it with double quotations, this becomes a string, and it's going to print it as is, okay? As it is, just like this, right? So when I do that, it say it prints it just as it is. Put a space in there, oops, put a space in here, and it prints it just as it is, right? But if I don't 
or if I remove the double quotations or single quotations. Now I'm printing out the content of a variable. And the variable doesn't go with quotations because anything that goes goes with double quotations or single quotations becomes a string. A string is basically a series of characters or one character. Oh, sorry, a, single, a series of characters, sorry, uh, with, with double, double quotations. Or, be, or it can be one character too, with, uh, surrounded with double quotations. So now it's printing the value of number one. I can now also tell it to print the value of number two. Run the program again and it tells me three. So by doing this, I've told the computer to, to reserve space in its memory, give it a name, and store this value in there with an equal sign. Now what's on the right is what's going to be stored in what's on the left. It's not the other way around. So in, 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 in math, you can do something like x is equal to 4 or 4 is equal to x. It's the same thing. But in programming, it's the other way around. What's on the right is always what's stored and what's on the left. When you try to do something like 4 is equal to number 1, you're going to get an error. When I run this, it's telling me, you see, this line is highlighted. And it's telling me can't assign to a literal. Now we'll talk, we'll talk about literals. But a literal is basically a value, any value that is written into your program. So in this case, 4 is a literal because 4 is a value, right? And it's telling you that, okay, it's telling it, the, this error, this line is telling you that it can't assign, okay, it can't assign this number 1 to a literal. You can't assign number 1 to to, to, to the number four. It's not possible. That's what this program over here, this line here is telling you. Can't assign number one to, to the number four. So you have to take it back. I'm going to undo it to, to where it was. Run it and now it's displaying to us what's stored in number two. When I change it back, when, when I change the value of let's say number one to let's say five and change this to one and run it, it's telling us the value of what's stored in number one. So your computer is going to keep track of all that information, right? So assuming you wanted the program to display the sum of number one and number two, but but you want the, but, but you've, you you sorry you designed the program in such a way that it's going to tell you the answer with your name. So the program would want to know your name too, right? So it will ask you, what's your name? Now when you provided your name, it needs a place to store that too. So you can that will also be stored in a variable. Right, given a name, and that name will be something like um, full name. So I can create another variable called, let's say, full name, or I'll just say name for now. And then, now remember, it, it has to be a string, right? And I'm going to say this, right? So I've stored this is my full name, by the way. So I've stored my full name in a variable. And I've surrounded it with double, double quotations because I'm trying to tell the program that this is a string, right? This is a string. So don't worry about it. I just wanted you to know, at least have an idea of how variables work or what are variables. Um, so the computer would need to keep track of all this, all, all these, you know, pieces of information, given names, right? So they can, uh, can they can be identified, and you can refer to them and tell me, tell ask the computer. What's stored here? Can you use this to, you know, to do this? Can you add this number to this number? You know, stuff like that. In the future videos, we'll talk about all these different types of data, numbers and strings and all, all you know, there are, there are a bunch of them and we'll look at each one of them separately. But for now, I just wanted you to have an idea of how variables work. All right. So if you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll do everything to respond to them. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time with the next video. All right then, bye-bye.